Hello everybody and welcome to this, the first lesson of the first course of our Academy Pumps Bombas. The name of this course is Flow of Fluids in Pump Practice. Let me first in introduce myself. My name is Jorge Jimenez. Jorge in English is George, very well known name. <laughs> I'm a mechanical engineer. I have a PhD degree in fluid mechanics and power engineering, obtained in Valladolid University in Spain. I work as project engineer, a specialist in rotary equipment, especially in pumps, at Empresarios Agrupados, Madrid, Spain. This company is an engineering company involved in projects such as uh, nuclear power plants or related to, to power plants, nuclear power plants, conventional power plants, solar power plants, and so on. You, you can visit uh, our webpage, you, you have the link there. I have more than 30 years experience with pumps. Sometimes acting uh, at manufacturer's site, but most of the time as a user, of course. My experience covers fields such as pump design, pump operation, pump maintenance, pump selection, and so on. And finally, for many years, I have acted as university lecturer on fluid mechanics and pumps in different universities in Cuba and Spain. Well, after <laughs> this long, long <laughs> introduction, I'm very happy uh, to start the first course. Uh, We all know that matter can be found in nature in three states, solid, liquid, and gas. Among these, among these, the liquids and gases form the fluids. Let's remember what a fluid is. Fluids are substance that deforms continuously under the application of a sheer stress, a tangential stress, no matter how small it may be. This is the main difference between fluids and solids. The fluids flow. There are many other differences between liquids and gases or between fluids and solids we will not treat here. We will focus only on this characteristic. The fluids flow. So, regarding dimensions and system of units, as I mentioned before, not always properly used. Dimensions. What a dimension is. A dimension is the measure by which a physical variable is expressed quantitatively. The measure by which a physical variable is expressed quantitatively. What is this? Well, dimensions can be split into two categories primary dimensions and secondary dimensions. Primary dimensions. Well, let me say first that the system of units we will use in our courses is the international system of units. What are the primary dimensions related to the international system of units? Mass, designed M, length, denoted L, thermodynamic temperature, designed with the capital letter T, and time with the small letter T. Secondary dimension, for example, area, is obtained 
by multiplying dimension L by dimension L. So square L is the dimension of area. Velocity is the space divided by time. That is to say dimension L divided by dimension time. Density is obtained dividing a dimension mass by dimension volume, namely L to the third power. And there are many others, secondary dimension, force, you know, force is obtained from mass by using the second Newton's law, pressure, flow rate, viscosity, power, etc. Regarding units, a unit is a particular way of attaching a number to the quantitative dimension we have seen before. So we have several unit systems. The first then is the international system of units. The, the system that we will use and the system that is applied and accepted by all the countries is the international system. The second system, of course, is the US customary system. The English engineering system, the British engineering system. The metric system is already not that used. And the CGS system. The same as we have seen when re re remembering dimensions, units uh, can be divided in, into two uh, theories, base units and derived units. Dimension mass in international system, the unit is kilogram. Dimension length in international system is mirror. Dimension temperature, thermodynamic temperature, the unit is Kelvin. Dimension time, the unit is second. Derived units from base units are, for example, force, Newton, pressure, Pascal, velocity, meters per second, etc. Prefixes from international system. We can use uh, many prefixes. For example, we have the, in this table the factor, the prefix name, the symbol, and some samples. For example, megapascal, we have to multiply pascal by 10 to the fixed power. Kilo, we have to multiply the unit by by 10 to the to the third power. For example, in the case of Newton, kilo Newton, we have to multiply by 10 to the, the, to, to the third power. Hectopascal, multiply Pascal by square 10. And below the, the main unit, we have, for example, milli. And in this case, we should multiply 10 by the minus third power. What happened with this unit bar? One bar is equal to 1,000 pascal. First, this is a unit accepted by the international system, but it is not a unit of the international system. Keep in mind that the atmospheric pressure is equal to 1,001, 325 Pascal. What does it mean? This means we never will measure pressure in Pascal because this is, it is a very small unit. So I, I believe that this is the main drawback of the international system. Another important thing, the units bar G and bar A. 
For example, we have mm, stated here 10 bar G, 10 bar A. We normally use this unit, but what's the problem with this unit? They do not assist. They do not assist. We use this unit. Of course, we use, I use this unit, of course. But we should know all that this unit do not exist. So, where these units come from? They were copied from pound square inch gauge and pound square inch absolute. What is the right way to use uh, the, the concept of pressure, of, the, of absolute pressure, and the concept of gauge pressure? Simply define them in concept. That is to say, instead of bar G, we should say pressure of gauge or gauge pressure. Instead of bar A, the correct or the right way to express this is absolute pressure equal to 10 bar. So keep this in mind.